Welcome to the Strength Connection Podcast, a show to share stories, insights, and experiences in strength physically, mentally, and spiritually. I'm Michael Krukowski, host of the Strength Connection, and I'm so grateful that you can join me today. So in these episodes, I connect with some of the most inspiring and successful individuals to chop it up and learn from true life experiences that have helped them become who they are. So let's dive in. Here we go. All right, and we're live. What's up, guys? Thank you for joining me. Welcome to the Strength Connection Podcast. So on this solo episode, got a few things that I wanted to share with you uh, and dive into. One, I got a really great opportunity recently to speak with a great group and wanted to share a little bit of insight in there and something that really made me think afterwards um, that I'm, that's the bulk of what I wanted to share today. But then also chat a little bit about the takeaways that I got from some of the most recent episodes that I did with Scott Allen and with Nora Matthew. So start with that first. So Scott was really great guest. I appreciate him coming on and sharing his insights. He's been an author of, I think, 20 or 25 books on personal development. And uh, I wanted to have him on. For, at first, I love people who write a lot. Uh, I always get so much from hearing about their process, how the evolution of their writing has come about, because often writing and thinking are, you know, go hand in hand. So to see how somebody thinks and how it's evolved over time, always curious about, you know, their personal experience with that. And, you know, the biggest takeaway I got from Scott is, I mean, he came uh, on the podcast from Japan. He lives there. He's been living there for, you know, a decade plus, I believe. And just the way that, he had specific things that he was hoping to do in his life and just jump feet first in, just dumped into the dive in, uh, into the deep end, not knowing whether it was going to work out or what the experience was going to be like, but just felt that it was right. And I always, I really thought that was interesting because I think so many people that we have these things that we want to do, but we ruminate so much on, is it the right time? Is it the, is it going to be a good experience? What if this happens? All those questions that start coming up into life. And the big takeaway I got from Scott is like, he just jumped in and just started doing it. Didn't really know what he wanted to, to write about, but just started working with it, just diving into it, putting it out and seeing what came about. And then from there, has built something that he absolutely loved and is a great success um, in the work that he does. So that was really the biggest takeaway I got from just hearing Scott's personal experience about just going after it with the best intentions that you can, hoping for the best, and then just figuring it out as you go along the way. You know, it's kind of a tale as old as time, but those stories of people experiences that have done it never get old for me. So that was the big one that I got from Scott Allen. And then having Nora on, uh, Nora Matthew was an absolute privilege. I was so pumped to chat with her. Um, you know, Nora's an elite strong first instructor. So we have a kinship in that time. We're also very close in proximity to where we live, which is interesting because in upstate New York, there's not so many of us. There's, you know, really only a handful. So I knew of Nora for a bit. I think we knew of each other for a while, but I didn't get a chance to really know her or see the studio and the work that she was doing until just a few months ago when I got a chance to go and train with her at her place a few different times. So I asked her to come on the podcast because I just wanted to hear her experience and the work that she's doing in strength. And what she's doing is she's just doing it the right way, you know, told all about the experience of, you know, college athletics and sprinting and then how she got into strength and particularly the work that she's doing now working with women uh, specifically and teaching them the work and strength that along with her work with pregnant fans, So working with pregnant women pre and postnatal, she went into a lot of that information. So for any coaches of just getting some good experience from a great master, go listen to Nora. I really appreciated just speaking with her. It was a blast to have her on the show. So recently, this was something I've been thinking about uh, quite a bit. And the first time I remember hearing it was from Aubrey Marcus, he talked about the difference between a person and a persona. And I think it's so easy for us to speak through a persona or how we want to be portrayed versus the actual person of who we are, you know, and I'm going to give some context behind it, but I just wanted to bring that up uh, to begin with, because this came up in a recent experience I had speaking at a local college. I got asked to speak with student athletes at uh, a college near me, Skidmore College. 
And this was with all collegiate athletes. And they asked me to speak about the concept of overcoming overwhelm and stress. So really on the mental side of strength, not just on the physical. So I wanted to connect those both together um, and put together a presentation of a lot of different practices, things that they could leave uh, that seminar going in and implementing right away. It's a lot of things I've talked about on this podcast solo, as well as with a lot of guests and a lot of the work I do just in coaching in general that I've been doing over the last decade. So first off, going into it, I love working with student athletes and just because of the time frame that they're in in their lives, you know, and I think it's something that can carry on into adulthood so much because at that age, there there's a lot of demand on their plate. And it's also probably the first time at that age that you are dealing with a lot of different things, you know, from practice and games to schoolwork of managing new friendships, relationships, also planning for your future. Like there's a lot on their plate. And at that experience level in life, they don't have a lot. So it can be very easy to get into that overwhelm, that anxiousness and feel very stressed. So I understood the concept of what they wanted me to speak about, but I wanted to bring this up right away with them is to think about eliminating overwhelm and eliminating stress. What I've learned in all the experience that I've had of speaking with great coaches on the podcast, as well as just in my personal experience in my career is you're never going to get rid of it. Life is chaotic and it's always going to be that way. Okay. doesn't mean there's not going to be degrees and variance in there, but this idea of eliminating stress and eliminating overwhelm, I think is complete bullshit. And if you're an adult and you're listening to this, you know that, like if I told them, if you think you're, if you think time is demanding right now, wait till you get out into the real world and you have a job, you have a family, you have a lot of different obligations and people pulling at your time. Like that is, you know, you're just at the beginning of it right now. And I think to be able to implement practices for self-care and to spend some time on yourself when you're busy and when you don't have a lot of time, that's the best time to do it. When you've got a lot of time that is already committed to be able to put into practices that are really best for you and check in with yourself before you check in with the world, that's a skill set like no other, because there's going to be times of ebbs and flow. Oh, it's going to be more open at times, but then it's also going to be really demanding at times. And I know so many people that I've spoken to in my career who kept waiting on that one day when everything's going to line up. It's like one day, I know I just got to get through this time of the year and then I'll be good to go. I just got to get through this and then I'll be ready to commit to this. And then eventually they realize that that time never comes. They're never fully ready for it till they just have to dive in. And the one thing that they always say once they've seen success and they started implementing this is I wish I did this sooner. So I think that was a message I wanted to get out. And I wanted to share it here on the podcast of do it when you're busy. You know, like do it when your time is already stretched and figure out a way to put it into your schedule. And if you do that, then you're always going to know how to do it. And it's going to be a skill that you can develop regardless of what else is going on in life. So afterwards, it was a great seminar. And there were some questions afterwards from the kids, really good questions. But one of them stuck with me and I wanted to share it here. And it was from a young man who's about to graduate and he asked me just plain, like, do you, do you practice all of these every day? And I went over six or seven practices that, you know, you can do for working on your self-care, your mindset, the physical side, all this different stuff. So it's a lot. And he didn't say it in a combative way at all. Like there was definitely just very curiosity in his, in his tone. And I answered it. I was like, you know, like I work on, you know, a few of these religiously every day. I've worked on all of them together and I try and manage my time so I can get all of them at all different times. You got to make time. You got to figure out when to get it in and just put the reps in, put the volume in, and then you'll figure out what works best for you on a day by day basis. I didn't think it was a bad answer, but it didn't sit well with me. And what I realized afterwards, I thought about it and I was writing a little bit about it. And I was like, why didn't this sit with me well? And I realized that that was a really great opportunity to sit back for a second and to be a person rather than 
give the best answer that I thought he they would want to hear. And I think the answer wasn't bad, but it wasn't exactly what I was feeling. What I was really feeling at that time is, dude, I struggle with these still to this day, every day. I work on it and I put sometimes my best intentions into doing the right things and making the perfect day and I still fall short. But I still put my best effort in and I figure out how I can get a little bit better each day. Sometimes I don't. Sometimes I just want to say fuck it and I just want to throw it out to the side and sometimes I do. But then from doing it over and over and having intentions to do the best that I can is eventually I do get back to it. But by no means am I perfect or by no means in some of them I'm even good. Some of them maybe I'm just fair. And what I realized from that is that I think it's very easy for us to always want to put our best self out there to other people. And I've done that for a long time in my life is kind of that people pleasing type moan. That's something that I've known that I've done. I want to make people feel comfortable. I want to make people feel you know, strong and that work rather than sometimes just being vulnerable and saying, no, man, I struggle with this all the time. I think it's a good idea and I've seen the results of what this does, but I haven't yet figured it out myself and I'm still working on it. And I think as coaches it's very easy to fall into this category of this persona is we want to be viewed in this way of we've got all the answers. Like even if we're, we're working on it, we can say, yeah, sometimes I struggle, but then I get out of it and I just, you know, I go into it and I just focus on the process and I just get in. It makes it a very romantic view of, yeah, like absolutely I still struggle, but I'm working on it. I'm going to get there and I'm going to prevail. Not saying that, yeah, dude, sometimes it absolutely sucks. And I criticize myself as much as anybody. I think I'm not making any progress. And when I have tough days like this, I think that nothing is going well. And I just want to curl up and I just want to say, screw it. And you're going to have those days. And sometimes you're going to have those days one after another, and it's going to spiral. And then you got to figure out how to get out of it. And it's going to be, and it's going to suck. I didn't say that at that moment, and I wish I did. Just because of this is it comes back to that being a person versus being a persona. And I think there's so much out of what we see from social media, from people we aspire to be like, from people we're seeking guidance from, that it seems like they have all the answers or they're they're why they love the process and they're working at it every day. Why do I feel like that? Why can't I just, you know, be happy with just, you know, doing, you know, just going through the process. I want to get to the destination, but why can't I love the process? And that's something I realize is like, yeah, sometimes you really don't love the process. Sometimes the journey is really tough and it really sucks. And I see that often of things that I'm working on. You know, I'm trying to work on growing the podcast. I'm trying to keep building my coaching. I'm trying to maintain relationships that I have. And it can be really challenging and it can be really struggling. And those struggles can go over and over again. It's not just you recognize it one time and then I put in this practice and now everything's good. I think we see that a lot from stuff. Like one day I, you know, I was struggling at this time and I was in a dark spiral, but then I realized one day that I, you know, this is what I can do. And then I found out who I was and then happily ever after everything's been perfect afterwards. That's a very common thing that we see in the coaching world and in the personal development world. Yeah. One time I, it sucked. One time I was in a dark place, but then I did this and now everything's good. They don't talk it often anymore about how, yeah, no, I still struggle and I'm not okay. And I'm trying to figure it out. And some days are good. Some days are not. And I'm trying to figure it out. And I think I'm going to figure it out. But you still have doubts sometimes. And it's okay to have those. So the best thing you can do is find practices that you've seen have worked and are practical 
and do your best. And you're going to be farther along than you were if you didn't. And I think sometimes that's the best thing you can do. I remember my old coach, Huggy, uh, when I worked with him in Cashy Nutrition, called this phase that we were in aggressive maintenance. And he said, sometimes like when you've got a lot of stuff on your plate and you're trying to figure out how to balance everything, sometimes the best thing you can do in a specific thing you're aiming for is to aggressively maintain. Okay. It's kind of like putting it on cruise control. You're not really excelling at different times, but you're staying idle where you at. Sometimes that is the best that you can do. So when more times open up, then you're ready that you can make another leap forward. And I wanted to bring that up is because I've seen so much of people. And when I say people, I mean, I've done this myself and I still do this and I trying to work on it is putting on the persona of who we want to seem portrayed as and who we want to be viewed by other people as, and not actually just being raw and just being vulnerable and saying, yeah, you know what? Still struggle a lot and I'm working on it but it still comes and it sucks, but I'm going to do my best. And I'm going to figure it out. And that's the best I can do. And that's what I hope that you do too. So I just wanted to bring that up and just share that of specifically, if you're a coach and you listen to this, so almost ask that question when you're putting information out there, or you're speaking with people is, am I speaking through a persona or am I speaking as a person? And that's a question that I'm asking myself a lot right now of, What lens am I seeing this through or what voice am I portraying this through? And I don't think you always end up with just getting to the person. I think there's always that way that persona wants to, you know, jump in. But the more that you work on it and the more you know who you are and, sp and you speak truthfully and authentically like that, the easier it is to get to that realm. And that's what I'm working on. So that's what I wanted to share. This was just on my mind a lot uh, in this time and just in the attempt of being just truthful and just being honest is I wanted to bring that up because that question did not sit with me and I knew it in my gut at that moment. And I wish I gave a better answer at that time, but that's how you learn. So hopefully that resonates with you. Hopefully, um, you know, you're catching what I'm, what I'm throwing out there and hopefully it's, you know, helps you if you've uh, been thinking about this as well, because I know for a lot of you, you probably are. So uh, I'll leave it at that. So thank you so much for listening. I appreciate it. Always appreciate your support. And uh, until next time, chat soon. All right, peace. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you found some great value here. And if you like this episode, please drop a comment and leave us a five-star rating and review. It does more to build the show than you can imagine. And do not forget to check out and join the Strength Connection Facebook group. In this group, I share the biggest takeaways and lessons from these amazing conversations, as well as training and strength tips for pursuing mastery and fulfillment in life. It's, this group is filled with individuals looking to take full control over their strength, and it's the perfect space to explore new ideas and to share your journey. And you'll also get exclusive access to the Strength Connection Mastery Seminars to deep dive into the physical, mental, and spiritual training that you can begin using immediately. So do not wait. Go now. Seriously, go. All right, much love to you. Thank you so much, and I'll catch you on the next one.